Did you know that a completely undiscovered human kingdom lies somewhere on Azeroth, possibly as powerful as Stormwind, but at least the size of Gilneas? This is a mix between Gilneas, Lordran, and Titan architecture, and they're wielding weapons we had never seen before. And before you say no, these are not the light humans from the Warbidden trailer. The light humans are just a small group of the paladins that split away from these guys a while ago. However, this massive human kingdom exists on a landmass no one has ever reached yet because we never interacted with these guys, we never saw their merchants, travelers, expeditions, we are only going to uncover one of their expeditions soon. These guys that would not think of the Legion invasion, the Scourge, the Horde, the Alliance, the Lich King, therefore if they do become playable, this could mean that the Horde would get playable. Humans, as crazy as that sounds. What is this eight undiscovered human kingdom? and is it the most powerful human kingdom we are yet to see? Did you know you can play WoW on your phone? You can check in on your characters, you can play the game, you can even do minor things you don't really want to do on the PC. With this video sponsor, Awesome, allowing you to control your PC with your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS, and Android. Awesome is incredibly easy to use. Check out my link in the description, download the PC and the phone version, and just connect it. The free version itself is amazing, as you can control your desktop, transfer files, but the real deal is the game version. It has custom keyboards for various games, other than just wow and you can enjoy afk gaming at any time anywhere with game sound make sure to use my code doron to get seven days completely free only for the first 200 people they also got a smart plug to turn off your pc at any time as well as hot sales with up to 40 percent off on pro and game versions check out awesome if you're familiar with the human lore, you might remember that in the ancient past, in the northern part of the eastern kingdoms, there existed the Arati Empire. It was the main military force led by the humans, most notably it defeated the Troll Empire, and at the time, it was one of the most powerful military forces really on all of Azeroth. Eventually, it split into the seven human kingdoms, which is one of the reasons the continent is called the Eastern Kingdoms. However, by this new lore that is coming in the war within, it turns out there are in fact eight human kingdoms and this could have some serious implications. So in order to really grasp this, let's just focus on the timeline real quick so you can kind of see how this falls into place. Troll Wars happened some 2800 years ago and this was a massive war between the Amani, the United Trolls and the humans and the High Elves of Walter Last. Now following this victory, eventually the very powerful Arati Empire splintered. Now there wasn't some groundbreaking event where the Empire just shattered, it kind of happened gradually, we got Delrans, Spitting as a magic based city state that didn't like the magic laws in Strom, which was the Arati capital, and then over time everyone just kinda started doing their own thing. However, this was a process that happened more than a thousand years after the Troll Wars. We know that some 1200 years ago, Stormwind gained their independence and settled far south. However, at the same time, we got the militaristic Gilneas and Alterac, and from this militaristic Gilneas, sailors ventured a bit further down the sea, founded Kul Tiraz that we had recently visited. Lordaeron was also formed, and it was a pretty big religious site for the humans and we will get to this in a bit why this could be relevant. Now I know this is a fantasy universe and very often this is kind of just actually throw years away so you know 10,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago doesn't really mean much to you. However just think about it like in real life terms I mean keep in mind the split between the Arati Empire and Stormwind happened as much as we are here in the present day and the fall of the Western Roman Empire so you can kind of grasp how over that time period not only would new nations form but also completely different cultures, new traditions, languages, especially if these kingdoms were geographically far apart and isolated. And this brings us to the new and undiscovered human kingdoms, which is by definition going to be the most different of all the other human kingdoms we had ever encountered. So all this info is coming from the post BlizzCon interview from some of the lead narrative people working on the World Soul Saga, and they were asked about those light humans and so people just completely ran over this and they missed one single line that predicted a huge amount of new content coming as well as a brand new content. We were told how we got the seven human kingdoms, this is the eight human kingdom that we never heard about. However, this split didn't happen together with the seven human kingdom split that we know in the lore, which is why we never heard about them, why this isn't actually a retcon, but these humans split prior 
to this event. We can of course only speculate on the timeline when it happened, but seeing that the major turning event for the Rati Empire was the Troll War 2800 years ago, it probably didn't happen before that. So more than likely, these humans split sometime between 1200 years ago, the Storm and Independence, to 2800 years ago, the Troll Wars, and potentially even during the Troll Wars. I mean, they might have been against the war, they might have not wanted to ally with the Elves, who really knows? I mean, we could really only speculate about this. However, this little bit of info from the interview here is key information. The Eight Human Kingdom spawned a new kingdom across the sea, that is the only thing we know, but these are not the light humans. These are completely different people we are yet to discover. The interview says this, and I quote, These guys are a splintered group from that kingdom that received a vision about a falling star, and it took them to Hero Fall. These guys are super devoted to the light, they're like uber paladins. So think about it, just here we have Cool Tiras, which is an offshoot of Gilneas, light humans of Herofall are the offshoot of this undiscovered human kingdom. Now remember what I previously said, 1200 years is a long time, and if you're geographically split, it can form to something entirely different over the years. This is why the architecture of Stormy, Gilneas, Lordran, Dalaran is just completely different, even though they're interconnected. The culture is generally similar, but there are obviously see quite a few differences. Now, check this out. If these guys split twice as long ago and they sailed really far away and seeing that we never heard about them or interacted with them, it must mean they are actually isolated. With the Eastern Kingdoms, it is a bit different. I mean, they war with each other, traded, created the lands of Lordaeron, they shared a lot of common struggles. So there was quite a bit of contact between the seven human kingdoms over the years. Kul Tiras itself, for example, is on an island, but it was closely tied to the rest. Hence, it is quite similar. It pretty participated in all the recent events, but these guys are far away, split, completely different. They know nothing of the Orc invasion, of the Scourge and the Lich King in Artis, or the Alliance and the Horde, or the Legion invasion. As far as we can tell right now, what I'm saying is that we can expect these humans to be completely different than anything we had ever seen before. Now you may be thinking, I mean, what could they actually look like? And the closest thing we can attach to them right now are the light humans from Castlegar, as you can see they're wielding zeppelins that humans never really do. Powered by a weird form of holy light, their architecture is also strange, like a mix between Gilneas and Lordaeron. Furthermore, from the trailer itself, we can see multiple body types, the regular and the cool Tyrann one, which means they might also have a completely different appearance, especially especially these light humans. However, once again, as I said, these guys are not the light humans. The light guys split quite a while ago without a doubt, so there could be differences between these as well. The Eighth Human Kingdom is certainly not on Kazagar. These uber paladins already established huge cities and a culture based on the light, so they have been here for a while. Also, most of the things we had seen is light based, which means they're probably just repurposed the Eighth Kingdom stuff and just turned it into light stuff, like light weapons. Now, here's the super interesting part. We had visited most of Azeroth, we had been to the Lost Isles, to Kazan, to Pandaria, Dragon Isles, and we have never heard anything about them. Not a single traded item, not a single traveler, not a single merchant, not a single expedition. Even with Pandaria, that was like completely hidden by the mists, we had encountered a traveling Pandaren, but there is not one single word of these guys, and it means they might be somewhere that is completely unreachable, and there must be a reason why no pirate or traveler heard of this kingdom. As I said in my previous this video, the biggest speculation is that these guys are going to be on Avaloran. You must have read about Avaloran more than a million times, so no need to repeat. The only thing I want to reference is the official documents they had added in recently in Dragonflight, like six months to recently. One says that an island known as Avaloran exists where Titan Forge Rebels are, and the other says that a green dragon formed a new Dragonflight somewhere beyond the Storming Sea that the Titans don't want others to reach and that no one has ever really reached in the past. The other document says a pirate reached the landmass no one else could in the past, and the old god document from Deathwing's laboratory says the titans apparently hid something beyond the sea. So essentially, all throughout Dragonflight, we got four documents that a super unreachable landmass exists somewhere on Azeroth, and then at the same time, we got a human kingdom that no one has heard about for like 2000 years, and no one has ever had contact with. I mean, you can kind of connect the two. Humans, even on islands, you know, they generally trade, raid, travel, but if they're really on such an unreachable continent, it would really explain why the eighth human kingdom would really be so isolated. So 
I'm almost certain that through the light humans in the war within, we are going to learn about their true origin and we're going to get patch content where we will discover this human kingdom. The Titan Forged Rebels that defeated Odin are so going to be relevant with the Titans' bad team that is going on in the World Soul Saga. Now, if we kind of batch these bits of info into one and we say that these humans had actually established themselves on Evaloran, we can expect this new Lord Round to be in contact with the Titan Forged Rebels that had their own also isolated culture for much longer than the humans, which means they might know a lot more than we know about the Titans, the World Soul, Azeroth, and all the crazy speculation theories. Furthermore, they would interact with these dragons and other native beings, seeing that they also got really advanced flying zeppelins and such, and other humans don't, it's likely they didn't come to this invention on a desolated island, but instead they picked it up from the technologically advanced Titan Rebels. So with all this info, let's kind of paint a picture of what this human kingdom could look like. Imagine a mix between Gilneas and Lordaeron with different body types like the Kultirans and the regular humans. They're also technologically advanced with weapons we had never encountered before, probably heavy titan influence. So think of it like a crazy mix between Kultirans and Oldar, if that makes sense, and they may or may not worship the light, it is possible that the light is a huge part, or that the light guys might have departed and took the light with them and the others don't really believe in the holy light anymore, it is really impossible to say at this point in time. This is also one of the reasons I said in the past we may be getting neutral humans in the future, if you said horde dwarves were coming before BlizzCon, everyone would think you're super crazy, but it is happening, however, these humans only ever allied with Quotalus in the past, the Horde and the Alliance are all the same today and they really have no such faction affiliations. This means that if they do become playable, there would be no reason why they would really join the Alliance. However, I'm almost certain they're going to play a really big role in the future. Keep in mind other things that are kind of going on at the same time. Stromgard is all but done and it is really just waiting for an update in the game. The city exists in the lore, Ilneas was reclaimed, soon we're getting Kul'Tiras updates. These guys originated from Stromgard, the city that was known as Strom, and I feel like with their heritage they're going to play a big role in all this stuff as well. Overall though, despite barely any info going on, this seriously might be one of the most exciting things we're going to cover soon, especially if it happens in the war with him. Thank you for watching, check out how well Lydia is going to betray us by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time.